Hey everybody, uh, good morning, it's Monday morning, and I took a few, a little bit more than a week off from uh, working on the property and working on this off-grid project, because uh, some of you know I had an ankle injury and I had to give it some time to heal. Um, I did a little bit more damage than I thought I did, uh, what do you call it, a week and a half ago when I fell into the gorge on the other end. As a result of that gorge, uh, that fall, I've decided to interrupt my work on the cabins and construct a few uh, man-made bridges uh, to get over the gorge. And what I've done is I've picked four points. And what I'm going to do on this video is just kind of take you through some basic, simple, rudimentary ways to build a, uh, a basic punch-on bridge, I guess some would call it, but a basic bridge that I call it my creek crossing or my beaver lodge creek crossing. Before I get into showing you the details of what I've been doing, I want to show you something real quickly. The beavers, uh, if you see over here, you can see in the middle of your screen, that is an old beaver lodge. Um, I'm going to get a little closer so you can see the sticks all oriented in the same direction. This is the work of the beavers. What they had done is they had created a pond uh, upstream or up creek here and also one down in this area and what I've done because I need to be able to cross this area to get to uh, some of my hookah culture beds on the other side what I've done is I have dragged um, again before I go on let me just say as you know with this whole project I've been working with just hand tools and my own physical strength so what I've done is I've dragged a couple of um, <clears throat> And also, I am close to my highway, so you're probably going to hear some cars in the background every now and then. But what I've done is I've dragged some long logs uh, that were left here on site by the, um, the logging crew. Basically, these ones, uh, one of them is a really nice log, but it had too many knots in it, so they didn't see it, I guess, as suitable lumber or whatever. But... Um, I took that, also took another one that was somewhat of a limb that came off a bigger tree. And what I've done is I've placed them across the creek approximately, oh, I'll call it four feet above the water level. Um, I'm doing this as a temporary solution to be able to get around and get material across. What I'm going to do is, you see the far bank over there? that you're looking at where I've put the board across the top of the logs, I am going to reinforce it. If you notice, I have a uh, short uh, log uh, down on the bottom. I'm going to get a little close to it and show you what I've done. And this is, the, the, the reason I'm showing you this is just to say kind of, you can do these little, little things to um, using the material you have on hand. Um, what I've done here is I have basically put the log in and if you can see, if you look very carefully, while I walk through the creek here, I have started uh, shoving stones underneath this log here, this decaying log. There's a reason I'm using that decaying log. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put better logs on the other side of it as I fill in back here with rocks. I'm basically going to build a footing to hold this part. Uh, this board you see, it's a cut piece of lumber. I actually found it uh, abandoned in an area where uh, some old growth trees were felled, and this was used to make a tabletop. You can see how thick it is. There's two of them that I found. There's the other one on the other side. And what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to create a little bridge that allows me to be able to walk across fairly safely and bring material across without killing the stream bank. And these um, branches you see that I've put over here, I've lined up over here, I've actually put them there for a reason. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to back the water up a little bit to see what kind of height um, I have to deal with in terms of uh, the amount of space I have underneath it for when the water starts running. Eventually I'm going to pull this bridge out, so I'm just laying it in and I'm using gravity. Um, I've dug a few areas out of the bank there where I dropped the butt ends of the logs, um, but outside of that I really am not going to do much. I'm going to nail it, uh, nail the boards that go across to the um, structural members or to the beams here or the supports, uh, um, my spans, excuse me, um, but uh, basically it's going to be something that I can take out or if the water gets high and washes it away, you know, 
it's kind of going to be natural. It's going to become part of the log jam that's in the creek bed. And it's not going to be anything that I'm worried about uh, at all. Now, I want to show you something else that I've started doing. And I'm going to, uh, again, this is just a thing of being resourceful. So I come out here and I have nothing, you know, no tools, anything. I pull a couple of long um, uh, supports across the creek. Uh, took a little effort, but, you know, it's pretty easy to do if you use the old skid row uh, process that I had showed you where you take a, a round log, you put it under the beam, and you push the, uh, what do you call it, poles across. You can actually move, you know, a 20-foot pole that's uh, pretty thick. That one's about uh, 10, 11 inches around. Um, and, you know, I was able to get that in here without much trouble. Uh, at some points, you have to roll and turn it because of the knots uh, that are in it. But otherwise, you know, you should be able to get it across. What I'm also doing is, you see this area here that is basically the trail that goes up. And I'm going to step up higher so you can see it. Um, what I am doing is, again, knowing that I'm using just the materials on hand, I place like one of the bigger rocks down there and another one you can see on the... Uh, left side uh, of your screen there. What I'm doing is I'm collecting these rocks from the old abandoned steam train right of way. When they built those things, they put quite a bit of these rocks in with the dirt to get, to build a base, a really good base for the um, for the train to run across or for the ties to be laid into and then for the train to come across. And if you think of the weight of a train, you know, they must have put quite a few of them in there and it's packed pretty heavy. So I basically sort of have a on-site rock quarry that I can also use. So what I'm going to do is on this end and on that end, I am completely going to reinforce it and reinforce the bank on either side, or uh, what I call the shoulders, with this, these rocks. What it'll do is it'll give me a very stable area with which to land both ends. I will then span it with uh, logs that I will either flatten out, you know, remove the bark so they're not slippery, uh, flatten one side a little bit. Um, I'll probably make some notches, or if I happen, I'll look at my woodshed and see if I have some old um, uh, 12 buys or 14 buys, and if I can, if they're scrap pieces, I'll cut them up and use them to span it. But either way it goes, by the end of today, I will have a completed bridge that I can go across, and I'm going to take a little walk and show you where I am querying the rocks from. And if you have this kind of a situation, or even if you don't, sometimes you have an area um, where you can, on your property, where you can actually, if you're resourceful about it, you can create, uh, you can... Um, you have a quarry on hand. So this right here, see this little hole over here? This is an area where I pulled one of those stones you saw down over there. They are buried in the stuff. And I knew they were here because obviously I walked it last summer before all the leaves fell. But I'm gonna show you a little area and what I've been doing. I'm walking through the stuff with a shovel and I'm tapping the ground. And obviously whenever you hit a stone, you get a really hard kink. And you can see when I hit a stone, I just roll them out. And they're kind of surfacy, really. They're not that far down. Um, this is my little metal bucket that I'm using to collect and transport them. Um, and I'm going to show you a little area that I've been working in just continuously this morning. Um, I took a break to film this. But look at what I've been collecting just out of the bed. Uh, just out of this little area here. That's my little shovel that I've been tapping the ground with, but there is a ton of this stuff here. So basically, without really using any major tools and just with stacking stones, I'm going to build myself a nice little bridge to be able to get across so that I don't muddy up the bank, destroy the area, and um, you'll see the results a little bit later. So this is kind of going to be part one, and uh, oh, that goes a logging truck. I heard that. You probably heard it too. Anyway, um, I'll do part two and you'll see uh, some of the stuff that I'll be using. I'll probably be using some uh, standing dead timbers. And again, I've done a video on these before, but these are some of them here. You can see these standing dead guys that are just leaning up there. I'm gonna bring some of them down, cut them down into sizes with my little trusty crosscut short saw. And uh, then I'm just gonna lay them across that thing. I'm gonna probably uh, either toenail them in or tie them down for now. And then, uh, yeah, make a little bridge. You see what it looks like uh, all in, you know, one day's effort. 
And again, all these are just to go, goes to show you if you're a little bit creative and you use the resources on hand, you can get a lot done. Um, all right, part two, come up next.